My job as horse master was to get to know as many of the 180 horses as possible and to grade them in A, B, and C categories to make a level playing field for the tournament. Being on a good horse puts a smile on my face and the ones that are those A pluses, it didn't take me long to know that it was an A plus. So Matilda is this bay mare that is sharp off the get go. And she was just switching leads like, you, all you had to do is think, I wanna go right and you're going right. There's some horses that are more rider specific and this one I felt like you could throw different people on her and they'd all enjoy riding Matilda. There's very different types of horses in those A pluses. So it's less that I'm looking for a certain type than that you feel like you can make a lot of plays when you're on the field. So when we were putting them up on the whiteboard, we were making our final groupings. And this was the part of the whole job that I was the most nervous about, was just how we would balance the eight pools to be as even as possible. Now those two whiteboards, I mean, there is a visceral feeling of relating to the horses that are on the board because we all love playing great horses and combining with them you get your favorites but there isn't a horse on that board that i've been on that i'm like this i can't play polo on this horse At the end of the day it's these individuals and how they combine with their horses that's going to make the difference of who goes forward in this tournament uh, we want to welcome you to the USPA National Polo Center for the fifth World Championship and congratulate you on being here. Now we're going to be asking the coaches of the teams in alphabetical order to come and pick their set of horses. When the teams arrived from all over the world, you could really feel the excitement. And in that opening meeting, they were drawing for their pools of horses. So this is the first time these teams will have the opportunity to ride their horses. And some of the horses are being ridden by multiple players um, to find which is the best fit for the team and horse. I think the USBA has done a brilliant, brilliant job together with J5 and Valiente. I think they, they have shown the world how a, a World Cup should be organized. An amazing experience. It's the second time I play a World Cup and it's completely different to what I've done before. And for them to bring the horses in especially for this World Cup is a massive effort and they've prepped them and, and got them up to an amazing standard. I think the good horses will make a very big impact. This will allow us to show incredible polo, very competitive. Being here in the States, being here at Valiente, the National Polo Center, for us, where we come from, it's like a dream come true. When it comes to polo, I think Brazil and soccer, Canada, ice hockey, the U.S. and basketball, Argentina is that dominant or even more dominant in their sport of polo. So Mexico was considered a bit of an underdog because one of their strongest players, Benito, wasn't able to make it at the last minute. The team was built around him. Uh, unfortunately, he had to take some compromises that he had signed previously. Argentina was firing on all cylinders in that first match.
One of the standout horses for Argentina was a mare named Inculpada. I think she's a very good mare. I think she's, she's different from the rest. She's very, very handy and she's a very comfortable horse to hit the ball off. We are the defending champions, so it's, it's an honor to be here representing Argentina. Pakistan and Spain was a terrific match. I think Spain went in there as the heavy favorites, but Pakistan had done really well in their practice game, and it was really exciting to watch their number three play. He was well mounted. It's interesting to see how the teams distribute their horses. Obviously, Pelagio's a very important player on that team because I see that that's one of the teams that's given their number three quarterback the best horses on their squad. The good thing about Nina, she's very, very easy, handy, comfortable, so she always gives you one more second. We're nervous playing a fantastic team as Pakistan and we won last soccer, last play. Uruguay Italy was the third game of the day. Santi Sterling has two or three of my favorites. Yeah, Loteria, in my opinion, is a mare that I think she has it all. To start off, you feel like you have a V8 engine under her, under your legs, uh, which is always a nice feeling, you know, that you can get uh, fast wherever you want in the field. It gives you confidence as well uh, to run the ball. The final game was USA against Australia. It was the first match in the National Polo Center stadium field, so it was a big one for these players. It ended up being a good performance and a good opener for Team USA. Jordy was, was probably my best horse today. He gets after it, he's a stallion, you know, what more can I say? I just remember being quicker than everyone else on that horse. I remember getting to the ball before anyone else was, but a lot of time. He's well done! That's it! Well done! I mean, the energy was there and we matched it. After the first day of matches, my impression was that there were four real contenders for the tournament. In the second round, Uruguay beat Australia. Great, all the people that came from Uruguay, such a nice crowd. We're gonna be happier than we are right now. Spain started to look like a well-oiled machine in their second match. The horse is doing great. Uh, we are really, really happy to put uh, Spain in the semifinals for the first time. Pakistan couldn't find the same rhythm against Argentina and Argentina was just too strong. They dominated that match. The horses, I think, in general for the whole team went really well. To win the World Championship would be a dream. We're working hard to do that. It felt like an upset in the second game, but Italy had made a roster change as well as a position change. When you are in your good horse, you know, you feel more confidence and you just get a connection with her that makes you play better.
So Spain, Uruguay, and Argentina were all 2-0 after two matches, and they had already qualified for the semis. The U.S. being 1-1 one one, had to win their third match to go forward. Now we're in our third game versus Uruguay, and I think it's going to be a really, really strong, tough game. Hopefully we can pull off the win to make it into the semis. do or die and we all kind of went in with cold heads and, and did it and didn't really think about the outcome until like the very end. It's always a mental battle just as much as it is a physical one. So to go the whole distance and be neck and neck going down in the beginning and then coming back and being able to hold it together at the end, you know, that's mental fortitude and that's what we've been working on this whole time and it's, it's a testament to our work. The USA was through. But immediately following their match with Uruguay, there was a complaint filed with the USPA about a post-game interaction with Jake Klentner. The USPA Executive Committee determined that Jake had not met the USPA's standards for conduct, and it suspended his playing privileges. Coach Julio Arellano was now faced with changing a member of his team right before going into the semifinals against heavy favorites, Argentina.